Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to be talking about painting and I invited our friend Harry and he is the guy that we're going to paint, right? Okay, now first of all, uh, you need to have the right settings here as far as printer and filament and so forth is concerned. Otherwise, you won't even be able to. Because, for example, right now I don't have my uh, printer turned on, so it doesn't recognize my AMS. It doesn't see that I got multiple filaments, so therefore it won't let me paint. So what you need to do is uh, set that up correctly. Well, first of all, this is my printer. I have a textured plate in here, but more importantly, I'm going to add filaments. Three, four, etc. Right. Now, now you see that we have this paint bucket type deal going on here that will allow us to paint. Now, these are not necessarily the right colors. Uh, when we get to the point of slicing and we hit the print plate, we will see the actual colors, but you can refresh that so it shows what you actually have, right? But we'll get into that in a minute. Okay, so we got our skull set up here and I wanna paint it. So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna click on the paint bucket. Now, when I do that, it's going to be uh, isolated as a separate object. You can, of course, rotate it around and do all that kind of cool stuff. And from here, we're going to look at, okay, how uh, do we paint it and what options do we have? Now, let's start with the simplest first, the one on the left, which is a circle. Now, if you click on the circle, you can go in here and you can select what color. And again, these are not necessarily the colors that I have for my filament but I would know which ones they were, right? So I'm gonna click on the red one and I'm just gonna to start to drag. And as you can see, that will be a, um, yeah, basically a brush, right? Now if I hit Control Z, so hold down Control and hit Z, I will undo that. I can hit Control Y if I wanna redo that, but I don't, so get rid of it. But I can play with that pen size and I can also play with that section view, so. What I'm going to do with the pen size is I'm going to make it way bigger. And now, as you can see, it's way bigger. All right. Now, when I paint over this uh, eye socket bone here, right, if I rotate it, you'll see that on the back side there, it's not painted. Now, that's important for later on. All right. So we're going to hit Control Z to go back. Uh, all right. So that's the pen size. I can also play with the section view. So I can drag this and as I do this you will see that it's basically cutting the skull in half and that can be helpful when you are painting certain areas right in this case maybe not so much but it's something that you need to know that you can do and you can also change the direction on that so you would get something like this but nevertheless a cool feature okay so now that we have that, we talked about this guy. So you can change the colors here, you can change the pen size here, and you can change the section view here, and also the section direction. Right, now remember when I painted over here and I said, look at the area behind, because it's not painted, all right? Control C to go back. What if I select the sphere? Now the sphere uh, acts a little bit different than the brush, obviously, and if I go over here, and I paint on that, it's painted on the back as well. So that's more like a 3D painter, if you will, right? Kind of important. Now, of course, you're going to have the same options here. You're going to change the pen size with that setup, so you can make it much smaller if you like, like so. And you have that section view again if you want to do that. And once you have that set, you can reset the direction as before and there you have it. Okay, now we don't want that stripe anymore, so we're going to hit Control Z to get rid of it, and we're going to go to the next one. Now the next one is pretty cool, especially if you are looking at very intricate uh, areas. And let me just try and reset this guy. Hit Control Zero. All right, just going to go in here and look at it from this angle. All right, so if we set the triangles, because models are triangulated when they are imported into uh, Bamboo Studio, if they're not already triangulated, right? And if I click on triangle, you'll see if we get really close, every time I hover over an area, it will select a triangle, right? So I can literally just paint triangles like so. 
Now, you're probably thinking, well, why is that helpful? Well, if you are in very small areas where you need to paint very small details and there's a ring of uh, triangles, then you can do that, right? Now, you can see here that the brush size now is gone because the brush size is the size of the triangles. So you can go in here and paint that. Now, you might think that's not uh, practical. Uh, trust me when I say it is, especially if the uh, triangles are a bit bigger. Uh, really neat. Okay. Now, let's get rid of that. Control Z. The next one is height range. Now, that is really, really neat. Let's say you have uh, the desire to make this look like a, a zebra or something, right? You can click with this height range. Uh, it will paint as such, right? Now, you would probably say, well, what for? Well, let's imagine you are creating a sign, right? And you have raised letters. So what you would do is you would, uh, actually, let me just uh, show you that, right? Let's go in here. Let's uh, right click, get out of painting for a second. Uh, bear with me. Let's go to the default view. All right, so I can select this guy in scale, right? And then I can right click and go to add primitive and let's do a cube. All right, now, and then I'm gonna right click and go to another cube. And this is just a little side thingy, but you know, just wanna explain something, okay? All right, so we got a cube and we've got another cube. Now we're gonna make the bottom cube a bit bigger. So we're gonna scale that, uh, this guy right here, scale it, okay. And then we're gonna move it over and then we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna make it longer. All right, and then we're gonna put this back. So let's just say this is your sign and these are your raised letters, right? Now the whole thing is one color, but you just want the text bit to be painted and the rest you want to remain black okay and don't worry about this error here so what you can do is go to the paint section and uh, make sure that we have the right object selected this is the one right we're going to go to the paint section and you can select the top part here of what you want right and let's say this is what you want painted i'm not exactly sure of the height there and you're happy with that and you're going to go back there you have it so your letters are painted and your base is not painted and uh, that's how that works right okay cool all right and we're back in our menu now um what do we have left we have the paint bucket and the paint bucket is basically as you would think it's just fill the whole deal so as you hover over your skull and you click on that it will paint the whole thing now, this can be uh, practical. Uh, in this case, it could be if you want to use it as a base layer. Uh, you can do that, right? Um, smart fiddle angle, you can change that. If there are certain angles that you don't want to include in your paint job, right? You can change that. But uh, in average, if you just click on this, then it will work. Now, let's say you want to get rid of everything. Erase all painting. There you go. Okay, and then finally we have the gap fill tool. Now, what is that? First of all, you can set a gap area. Let's say you have been painting, right? And you've been painting uh, all of this, right? And I mean, even we can even go and just fill it like this, right? Okay, so let's say you painted the whole thing, but for whatever reason, there's a tiny area that hasn't been painted. If we get in really close here around the nose, right or here you see the areas that have not been painted now the thing is if you leave it as such what will happen is you will get a filament change and it will go from one to the other and it will have to uh, purge the filament and it's going to cost you right so the gap filling tool is something you can use to do uh, the fixing click on it it's all gone right that's how easy that is so yeah, these are the options you have when you want to paint your objects. And uh, hey, there's still some uh, stuff going on there. So let's go and increase that gap area. As you can see, it's gone. Just move that slider, right? Yeah, so uh, that, these are the options for painting. Uh, if you got any questions, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, hit that sub button and I'll see you guys in the next one, right? Bye.